find other great podcasts like this one at podmoth.network. Hey, Twisted Listeners, I'm Cindy. And I'm Diva, and we are the Twisted Listeners, a weekly podcast about murder and lists. Each week, we cover 10 cases that all fall under a specific topic, which we also choose weekly. Past topics have included family annihilators, murderous moms, mysterious and spooky deaths, online predators, and other truly twisted topics. We cover many well-known cases, but we also love to sprinkle in some lesser-known murders, so there's always something new and surprising in every episode. So, if you love lists and true crime as much as we do, then we're the podcast for you. Join us for some twisted tales and interesting topics every week. And remember, stay off our lists. Hey, what's What's up, up, you guys? guys? My name is Catherine. And my name is Haley. And we are Saturdays for the Ghouls. A Podmoth podcast. It's a new year, bitches. <laughs> it's, it's a new year. <laughs> I wrote in my notes, I said, it's January, new year, new bitch, same insane stories. <laughs> Sounds about right. Okay. How are you, Haley? <laughs> I'm doing great, great, Catherine. I'm so excited. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Today's been good. Except for I like switched up the podcast topic today (laughs) i know your little manic episode i was like it's gonna be great it's gonna be great i'm excited so (laughs) i hope it's gonna be good it's true crime day true crime week so you know how it is just uh remember your trigger warnings and uh are there trigger warnings giving trigger warnings i probably should huh Uh, okay well big broad trigger warnings murder abuse (laughs) and (laughs) sa sons of anarchy i'm just kidding assault (laughs) i probably should say it out loud (laughs) so those are your triggers i understand you skip to the end and we'll chat with you and then uh, (laughs) but if not you're here for the ride i just don't want Uh, anyone to feel bad listening so also true crime is like a giant trigger warning (laughs) because that's what we're talking about today is true crime Mm-hmm. I was going to say, you can just, you know, stick around, or you can just go to the end where you get your daily, bo- your weekly boost of s- serotonin. Because serotonin. <laughs> we are, we are your little angels that bring you a little bit of brightness. <laughs> are we angels? Yeah. yeah are, we okay. are. <laughs> okay. To each their own. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> so, today's topic is going to be it's like three little mini stories okay it's a not just one not just two but three stories in one episode so one story uh 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 two (laughs) bring it back Um, to sesame street days baby (laughs) that's really where we got to be with our smooth brains (laughs) (laughs) Are you ready to hop into it? Do you have anything to talk to the spooky bears about before we go forward? Welcome to the beginning of a a new shit show. New year, same shit show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hope you guys had a good end to the year and an even better beginning to the year. I'm ready to see what this year brings us, Catherine. I am too. <laughs> you so. guys, spooky bears, you hold tight because we're going to be bringing you stuff left and right. <laughs> You won't know what to do with yourselves. <laughs> Left, right, forward, backwards, upside down. <laughs> oh, you'll be like those damn ghoul friends. <laughs> They're just like shaking their fists at us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you darn ghouls. <laughs> oh, jeez. Anyway, I do hope that you had a great n- new year and that this year is good for you. And if you say it's going to be good, let's just keep the momentum going manifest that shit (laughs) you're gonna have a good year all good vibes seriously this year's our bitch we take what we deserve anarchy (laughs) i'm I'm all like (laughs) peace love manifestation and Haley's like we're gonna make this year a bitch (laughs) 
I mean, right, is it wrong though? You're over here like daisies and rainbows. And I'm over here with like flames behind me. Fucking like, <laughs> we ride at dawn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a unicorn. You're a devil. <laughs> It's the amount of horns that you have that counts. Exactly. All right. So are you ready to get into true crime? All-time favorite cartoons say, I'm ready. <laughs> Yoy hoi mi noi. Okay. So our first case that we're going to talk about today is okay. the horrendous case of Laura Hobbs and Crystal Tobias. Laura Hobbs. And Crystal Tobias. Okay. In Zion, Illinois, on Mother's Day of 2005, Laura Hobbs 8 and Crystal Tobias 9 went on a joint bike ride to go play in their neighborhood. But by the nighttime, or like by dinner time, no one had returned home. Both families contacted law enforcement, police, and the families were searching for the girls basically all night long. Jerry Hobbs, Laura's father, and Crystal's grandfather drove around town searching for them or at least the bike that they were riding on so that they knew where to start their search at least right they searched all through the night and in the early morning they actually found the bike at a park where the girls generally you like to play hang out hang out yeah so when they found the bike they started walking towards them and then jerry spotted their bodies laying close by in like a open field the girls had over 31 fatal stab wounds to their necks and their faces, and they were sexually assaulted. The authorities began their investigation. They collected DNA. They collected evidence. And their prime suspect was Jerry Hobbs, Laura's father. He was on the top of the suspect list, and he was an ex-convict, which didn't work out for him in his favor. He had a lot of physical altercations on his record, including a chasing a man with a chainsaw when he was trying to stop a domestic dispute. So it's not like he had a really crystal clean record or anything. He chased a guy with a chainsaw in an attempt to stop a domestic violence? Nope. He was in the middle oh, of a domestic he was... dispute with his girlfriend. And then these guys came up to try to stop him, and he started chasing them around with a chainsaw. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hey, Leatherface. All right. <laughs> After the chainsaw incident, he was sentenced to probation, but then failed to show up for any of his meetings. So then he served 18 months in prison. That's it? For the chainsaw dispute? Yes. <laughs> Jesus. When they arrived on the scene, Jerry was in possession of a knife, and he was taken in for questioning. So, after a very long interrogation, Jerry Hobbs confessed to the murder of the girls, and he signed a written confession and filmed a video confession explaining what happened that night. He said this, that he and Laura, he went out to go find them because they hadn't come home yet, and he saw Laura and Crystal in the park. He was arguing with Laura about how she hadn't come home yet, and he stated that he grabbed at her arm, and she started pulling away, saying, like, let me go, and he punched her in the face and knocked her out. Then Crystal pulled out a small knife from her pocket and tried to step in to stop him because, you know, he basically punched her best friend. And he took the knife from her and punched her in the face. And then he said that the rest of it all continued to kind of happen so fast. But he continued to explain how he brutally attacked and stabbed the girls. And in his video confession, he was crying when he said it all happened so fast. But no word. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> You didn't mention anything about the... It doesn't make sense. That's what he says happens. But he didn't oh, mention shit. anything about the, about the assault. I know. Okay, so I didn't wasn't able to see his whole confession tape, but I saw bits and pieces of it, and that's what I gathered from it. So he may have said something about the sexual assault, but from what I saw, that part was not eminent about... It, that was not part that he talked about in his video confession. But I'm assuming it had to be there because... He confessed to the whole thing. Uh huh. And but he's crying. <laughs> he's crying because he's caught. <laughs> so he went to prison without bond, awaiting his trial. In 2007, there was DNA evidence from the crime scene that was being tested. And that DNA evidence did not match Jerry. But the prosecution explained it by this is that the locations where the girls were often playing and where they were found is 
<laughs> and the way that the article explained it was said that it was used by adults for extracurricular activities. <laughs> oh my um, god. <laughs> So I'm assuming that that's a hookup spot where people hook up. Yeah. And they said that the girls must have gotten some of the DNA on them while they were playing around in that location. And that explains the DNA that was found on the girls. Uh, okay. Jerry- I, would, I would be like, where did you find it? <laughs> okay. Because if it's like... Tell me the truth. Where did you find it? What? Yeah. Need more clues than this. <laughs> that's such bullshit. And... I feel like you can tell if it's old. Yeah. I'm sure a lab could tell. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I've seen CSI. So Jerry had not been convicted yet, technically, but the prosecution explained a trial would be merely a formality due to the case being an open and closed case because of his confession. We're going to move on to our next. next That's one. it? I don't like that. Yeah, I know, right? Crazy. So the next one is the murder uh, of Amanda Snell. In 2009, at Joint Base Meyer Henderson in Virginia, Navy Petty Officer Second Class Amanda Jean Snell hadn't showed up to work that morning. Her supervisor was extremely concerned that she never showed up for work. She would never miss work. She took her job very seriously. So her supervisor decided to make a wellness check. Upon arrival at her room or her apartment on base, they knocked and there was no answer. The military personnel tried the door and it was unlocked so they went in they opened the door and they were met with a gruesome scene amanda had been found strangled to death by a computer cord and her body was stuffed in the bottom of her closet and she had been deceased for at least two days when they found her investigators processed the scene and collected a small amount of evidence available and the case grew cold there was never a suspect found for their murder our next true crime and our last one the kidnapping of two grad students In February of 2010, in Ballston, Virginia, two grad students returned to their apartment after a night out. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop, party. They were met by a man with a gun who forced them into their apartment and tied them up with extension cords. He took one of the women and made her get into his car. He drove to a secluded area where he assaulted her and strangled her until she passed out. She was left for dead on the side of the road in a heavily wooded and snowy area. But here's where she was not actually dead. When she came to, she was able to stop a car by, that was driving by and report the crime to the police. She provided a lot of really important information. She knew what her attacker looked like and what car he drove. And more importantly, she was able to provide a DNA sample of a man who almost took her life. A man fitting this description was located later that day at his residence, and he was arrested. His name was Jorge Avilia Torres. And his DNA was collected, and they searched his vehicle. And inside his vehicle, they found a student ID of the girl and one of her earrings. He was held in prison, awaiting trial. In June of 2010, due to the nature of his crime of why he was being held, the DNA was run in a national database. His DNA was found to be a match from a case in 2005 in Zion, Illinois, where the young girls, Laura and Crystal, were murdered in a park even though someone had already confessed to the murders. I fucking told you! <laughs> I was like, as soon as I was waiting, I was like, wait, she said there's some what the fuck moments in here. And I was like, I'm still waiting for that what the fuck moment. And I was like, okay, this is the last story. And I was like, oh, National DNA Database, it's going to match to that probably beginning case. And you know what? It did. <laughs> At the time of the attacks, he was a Zion resident, and he was 16 years old and a junior in high school. He was also the friend of Crystal's older brother. After Jorge graduated high school, he moved away and joined the Marines. And Jerry Hobbs had been serving for the last five years in prison for a crime that he did not commit. Charges against Jerry were dropped, and he was released while Jorge awaited trial. The police were looking for more evidence that he was involved in the case of Laura and Crystal's murders. So they made a deal with a lesser sentence for an informant who was in prison for fraud and stealing money. So he wore a wire inside the prison walls and successfully recorded many conversations with Jorge. And one conversation was the most important. He was talking to the informant about a different girl who he had encountered on the military base that he was staying at. He explained very casually how he entered her apartment on base and the girl was sleeping and woke up as he approached her and the girl recognized him. He covered her mouth before she could scream and he admitted to taking the computer cord and wrapping it around her neck and strangling her. 
He explained that she passed out and he said, just because they pass out doesn't mean they're dead. So he explained that he continued strangling her for another two minutes or so. He also explained and went into detail about how he placed the body in the bottom of the closet. And when the informant asked him if he felt bad, he replied negatively and therefore implicated himself to all three murders. The police looked into the base where he was located at the time in the Marines, and it was the same base that Amanda was found at. And in fact, his apartment was just a few doors down from her. They placed a rush order to test the bed sheets that were sealed away in evidence to see if any of this, <laughs> to see if anything matched Jorge's DNA. And the DNA on the sheet belonged to Jorge. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> wow. In 2010, he stood trial for the kidnapping of the grad students. He was charged with multiple accounts and he received five life sentences plus 168 years on a state level for all his other crimes. In 2014, he was tried for the murder of Amanda. The jury unanimously found him guilty and he was sentenced to death. They then sent him to Illinois to be tried for the murders of Laura and Crystal. Although he was already on death row, it's important that he was tried for these murders to help with the closure and healing process. So in September of 2018, he made a plea deal and he was sentenced to another 100 year in prison, 50 years for each girl that he killed. Now for Jerry Hobbs. Why would someone confess to a murder they didn't commit? He explains that he had been interrogated for over 24 hours after staying up all night to find his daughter and then finding his daughter dead. It actually happens with a lot of false confessions. The person is interrogated for so long, but they just confess to escape the interrogation. Jerry elaborated after being released. He said, I just found my daughter. He said, she didn't even have eyes in her head. He goes, I was broken. So he filed a civil lawsuit against specific members of the sheriff's department involved in the interrogation. He explained that he was arrested 30 minutes after the finding the body and that they began terrorizing him at that point. They put him in like a paper, like suit, like they made him take all his clothes off and they put on like paper pants and a paper shirt. And they basically had him sit there and look at gruesome photos of his daughter and refused him a lawyer so they also had to record the video of his confession twice because the first time he did it they said that's not going to work after he does after his confession video they read him his miranda rights not when they took him in the first time he said that they knew that they were wrong and that there was a deeper investigation that needed to be done after figuring out that things were handled so poorly someone deep dove into like the DNA and how it was, you know, just brushed off. And it was because the attorney general at the time, dis he instructed the lab on which tests to run on that DNA so that it corroborated the confession of Jerry. So like they didn't do like a whole panel of testing on that DNA. They just did like certain tests so that we could tell that like it was not Jerry's or like whatever. So but Jerry was awarded $8 million for the mess up that they made. $8 million is nothing compared to his daughter's life, his life, his five years. But I guess at least they tried. Uh -uh. And that's the insane story of Jorge and uh, all of his murders that he's done. Uh -uh. Crazy, right? <laughs> that's insane so i'm glad you okay i'm gonna i'm gonna give a little like so after the amanda snell story right mm -hmm. i was like let me look her up real quick so i just typed her name and i read the very first article it says jorge torres brags on tape about killing sailor amanda snell yeah I read that part so fast and I clicked on it because I was like, wait, Catherine said there's no person. So I was like, I was going to be like, Catherine, look what I found. And then like, as soon as like, I had just started to read it, you were like talking and then you said Jorge something. And I was like, wait, was that the same guy? And then, and then it's, <laughs> so like, it was just like the perfect timing to where I didn't think that it was the same person. You should have let me reveal the reveal. 
I still, I was still surprised. There ain't no way I would have let a story fall at just like they never found anyone. Oh well. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I was like, Catherine, you know you hate unsolved mysteries up in this bitch. Yeah. See, I was. Oh, I was thinking. I was like, oh, I gave you a solved one, an unsolved one, and a survival story all in one story. But anyway, I guess that's it. That was really fast. <laughs> I liked it. I like this one. Thanks. <laughs> and you did this in one day. <laughs> Let's not Less advertise than. that. I was like, I was wondering how many things I could slip in there that you would just like glass over. <laughs> the first story was hard because like <laughs> the story of Jerry was like so hard to believe. <laughs> yeah. And so like that one was the hardest one to f- slip in there. And then, like, I said that, you know, Jorge left for the military when I was talking about the girls' trial, the girls' case. And I was like, I wonder yeah. if she's going to put two and two together. There was lots of, like, little hints that I dropped that Jorge was the person for all of them. I hope you, I hope you enjoyed that. I've watched, like, oh, yeah, what I was going to say is today I've watched, like, two different documentaries about it and read like four different articles on this exact person and I kind of hate him. So <laughs> that's about it. Yeah, like, Pretty much. I just hate him. <laughs> I'm just like, how can you do that to somebody? Like, so one of the, what's it called? Documentaries that I looked at, they were insinuating that allegedly <laughs> he may have antisocial personality disorder, which, you know, peaks at a young age and like, He was gloating about his crimes with the the guy, the informant, talking so casually about his crimes and like that kind of stuff is antisocial personality disorder. But the documentary also clearly stated like he's never, as far as we know, ever been diagnosed with APD. So I think that's how you do it, though. That's how you do that shit is you have APD. Jeez. So that's the true crime. At least it's solved and he's going to die. That's true. He's either going to die in prison or die from prison. (laughs) Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. That's all that we can always hope for. I know that sounds really mean, but he was heinous. So I don't feel bad. I'm just like, what? Like at 16 years old, man. At 16 years old, you could kill an eight and a nine year old with nothing and go on with your life. Well, also, like, okay, this is, I'm gonna sound a little fucked up for this, but like, I feel like killing is not as bad as like planning it out and like going through with sexual assault. Yeah, but he probably didn't plan either of that out. Well, okay, not the planning part, I guess, but I, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like murder is a lot more easy I guess <laughs> than sexual assault especially of a child yeah I mean it's both pretty fucked up so I don't like for heinous crimes like both of those things are I don't like assigning like what's worser because they're all kind of gross and kind of awful so yeah <laughs> and like if someone could murder an eight and a nine-year-old they could probably do all the other gross stuff they did that's true. If they could take away a life of someone who's probably going to be still alive for another 60 plus years, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not saying that murder's worse or whatever. I just, I just think they're, they're all really bad and gross and awful. So. Yeah. Disgusting. Awful human being. Basically. The other, another uh, article I read was that, like, he joined the Marines basically to, like, escape his town and, like, what he did. Because, you know, he got to leave. Yeah. Also, the the girl and the two roommates, they were just, um, like, miles away from each other in Virginia. Jeez. I'm just like, oh, that's what they look like. Ew. Did you get to Jorge? Jorge. <laughs> Yeah, because I see the the pictures of the little girls, and then it's, and then there's a picture of him. That's true crime. Next week is movie week. What are you doing, Haley? No idea. See. Great. I ask this question every true crime week. 
<laughs> no. I never have anything prepared. I know. <laughs> I've been wanting to do X and Pearl because they kind of correspond with each other. Do you want to do a double feature next week? We can do a double feature. I haven't. I've only seen X. I haven't seen Pearl though. Stay tuned for that decision. <laughs> you have anything to tell the spooky days before we go? Before we wrap up, I guess. <laughs> Hope you've had a good uh, first week of the new year and that you enjoyed this triple true crime. Triple true crime. <laughs> <laughs> With a single solution. And yeah, just Catherine's the motivational speaker here. So yeah, hope you guys have a good day. Stay spooky. <laughs> well, spooky babes, we appreciate you coming and joining us for the new year. And we hope you stay with us for the rest of the year. As Haley is insinuating, we hope that you are so you know, ready to take this year by the balls. <laughs> take it by the balls and make it your bitch. Anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know what? In other words, something that's lighter than that, squeeze the day. <laughs> Just squeeze it. Squeeze the balls. <laughs> <laughs> you matter. You're important. And if you ever feel like you don't matter and you're not important, DM us. And we thoroughly appreciate you. And we will see you in your nightmares. <laughs>